2018 Toyota Corolla. 2018 Toyota Corolla Review on. The 2018 Toyota Corolla is a competent if not overly exciting choice for a daily driver. 3 star overall dot with a low price tag and history of solid reliability. It's easy to see why the Toyota Corolla has become one of the world's best-selling vehicles the last 50-plus years. The 2018 Toyota Corolla builds upon the success of its ancestors with expressive styling, a surprisingly roomy cabin, plenty of advanced safety features and comfortable, supportive seats. But while the Corolla covers the basics well enough, a few deficiencies make its rivals better picks overall. The Corolla's cabin is fairly plain and does little to make you think you've bought anything more than a basic small car. It isn't much fun to drive, either, because of its underpowered engine. Factor in a small trunk and poor smartphone integration and you have a car that is difficult to recommend in a class stacked with more desirable choices. What's new? The 50th Anniversary Edition trim has been dropped. Otherwise, the Toyota Corolla carries forward unchanged. If you don't want to spend too much money, the La Eco is the way to go. We like it because you get plenty of features, a slightly more powerful engine, and modest fuel economy gains over the L and La. Our top pick, however, is the Corolla A. It adds a modicum of fun to the Corolla's otherwise snooze-inducing driving experience. It's also the only model available with a manual transmission. Select the manual over the Droney CVT and you'll also get extra goodies such as a sunroof and upgraded infotainment system. Trim Levels and Features The 2018 Toyota Corolla sedan is sold in six trim levels. L, La, La Eco, Se, XSE and XLE. Every Corolla is powered by a 1.8-liter four-cylinder engine. Most models produce 132 horsepower and 128 pound-feet of torque though the La Eco is a bit more powerful with 140 horsepower and 126 lbft. Power is routed to the front wheels through a continuously variable automatic transmission CVT on all models, though the SA can be optioned with a 6-speed manual. Standard equipment on the base L model includes 15-inch steel wheels, LED headlights, LED daytime running lights, adaptive cruise control, a tilt and telescoping steering wheel, a driver information display, a height adjustable driver seat, a 60-40 split folding rear seat, Bluetooth, a 6.1-inch touchscreen and a 6-speaker audio system with 6.1-inch touchscreen, a CD player, a USB port and, for iPhone users, the Siri Eyes free voice control system. Standard safety systems include a rear view camera. Forward collision warning with automatic emergency braking and pedestrian detection, lane departure warning with steering assist to nudge you back into your lane and automatic high beams. The LA add 16-inch steel wheels, heated mirrors, variable intermittent wipers, remote locking and unlocking, metallic cabin accents, upgraded upholstery, a rear armrest and automatic climate control. The La Eco starts with the LIS features and adds engine and suspension tuning designed for maximum fuel efficiency, 15-inch steel wheels, a rear spoiler and enhanced aerodynamics. The XLE builds upon the LIS set of features, adding 16-inch alloy wheels, upgraded headlights, LED taillights, bumper-mounted LED daytime running lights, a sunroof, keyless entry and ignition, simulated leather upholstery Toyota's soft hex. A power adjustable driver seat with Tauway power lumber, heated front seats, a leather wrapped steering wheel, an upgraded driver information display, a 7 inch touchscreen display, an app based navigation system Scout GPS link, and satellite and HD radio. The SEI is the sporty Corolla, although we use that term loosely. It starts with the LIS features and adds 17 inch alloy wheels. Unique front-end styling with a black mesh grill, a rear spoiler, steering wheel with paddle shifters for CVT models, sport front seats, soft hex upholstery with cloth inserts, and a sport-style gauge cluster. Also included are the XLE's upgraded headlights, bumper-mounted LED daytime running lights and leather-wrapped steering wheel. Opt for the manual transmission and you'll also get a sunroof, keyless ignition and entry 
and the upgraded infotainment system. The XSE has the same annual transmissions extra features and adds heated front seats, the 8-away power adjustable driver seat, the paddle shifters and full soft X upholstery. A few options packages are also available. La and La Eco models can select the premium package, which adds 16-inch alloy wheels, bumper integrated LED running lights and the upgraded infotainment system. A sunroof can be added to this package for the lips included with the package for the La Eco. The premium package for say CVT models includes keyless entry and ignition, a sunroof and the upgraded infotainment system, while XLE and XSE models can opt for an integrated navigation system and smartphone integration via the Intune app suite. Trim tested. Each vehicle typically comes in multiple versions that are fundamentally similar. The S and this review are based on our full test of the 2017 Toyota Corolla Say 1.8 liter inline 4, CVT, FWD. Note, since this test was conducted, the current Toyota Corolla has received some revisions, including the deletion of the Say 50th Anniversary Special Edition which will not affect this, as the trim was little more than an appearance package for the XSE. Our findings remain broadly applicable to this year's Toyota Corolla. 0. Driving. Performance has never been a strong suit for the Corolla, and it still isn't, especially with the current crop of compact cars. The engine under its hood hasn't changed since 2009, and the CVT automatic seems conflicted about its identity. If you value an engaging drive, there are many better options. Acceleration. The aging four-cylinder engine delivers underwhelming acceleration and winds unpleasantly when asked to work. This characteristic is exacerbated by the CVT automatic, which tries to simulate transmission gear changes without success. We needed 10.1 seconds to reach 60 miles per hour, which is quite slow for the class. Braking. Around town, the brakes have a good feel, are smooth and easy to modulate and don't have the pedal squish that plagues some of the other Toyota models. In our emergency braking tests, the Corolla needed 125 feet to stop, which is slightly longer than average for this segment. Steering. At low speeds, steering effort is light, but there's no feel of being connected to the road. It's better in sport mode at higher speeds, there's less assist, better on center feel and even some semblance of feedback rounding a corner. Most buyers in this segment will find this adequate. Handling. Without any real sporting intentions, the Corolla exhibits surprisingly tidy handling. There isn't much grip supplied by the all season tires, but we were surprised by how composed the Corolla remains at a mildly spirited pace, which is more than enough to make it feel lively around town. Drivability. The powered rain delivers decent throttle response despite its lack of power and unrefined character. The CVT is a little more fickle in how it adjusts ratios on the fly but also simulates gear shifts in certain instances. Putting aside all the oral idiosyncrasies, the Corolla is a decent driver. Comfort. The sport seats that come with the say provide great support, even if they seem a bit misplaced. There's nothing outstanding about the ride in the Corolla but we did find the climate control to be more than sufficient in keeping cabin temps in check. Seat Comfort The Say trim includes sport seats with generous lateral support, and despite its sparse adjustments, the seats proved comfortable over a three-hour trip. Cloth center sections provide breathability, preventing the seats from getting swampy over a longer drive stint. Ride Comfort Ride Comfort is no better than average for a compact car. It isn't overly floppy and bouncy but it transmits bumps like the small car it is. Higher frequency vibrations are especially prominent and it doesn't seem like much effort was put into making it ride like a larger car. Noise and Vibration There's an average amount of road noise, a little more than some and less than others in this class. There's also some wind noise around the mirrors, but it's not enough to be a nuisance. The biggest noise offender is the racket created by the engine at full throttle. Climate Control The climate controls are straightforward with a set of three rocker switches in the center for temperature, fan speed and vent control. The auto climate setting works effectively to maintain comfortable cabin temperature. Interior 
slipping in and out of the Kerala's cabin is easy, and once you're in, there's ample room to stretch out. All cabin controls are straightforward, and the touchscreen is responsive, if not a bit oversensitive. Unfortunately, some will find an issue with the lack of steering column extension. Ease of use. The Toyota Corolla's cabin layout is clear and familiar and doesn't try to be fancy, so it's pretty easy to use and figure out. The touchscreen is responsive, but it's easy to inadvertently brush a finger against a control you don't mean to, which can be frustrating getting and jetting out. Ingress and egress are easy thanks to a low step over height and wide door openings. Even the rear doors have a good head clearance, which helps minimize the amount of ducking needed to slip into their back seats. Driving position. There are few seat adjustments beyond the basics. The steering wheel tilts and telescopes, but the puny amount it extends is laughable. Taller drivers will likely have to compromise legroom to accommodate their reach. At least the steering wheel is leather wrapped and has a nice ergonomic feel. Roominess. There's an abundance of room up front, though the sport seats may feel a little narrow for larger drivers. There's decent headroom and back in 41.4 inches of legroom, which obliterates everything in the compact segment and embarrasses many mid-size cars. A nearly flat floor pan also aids foot space. Visibility. Large front windows feel large, and pillars that are thin in your line of sight make for good forward visibility. Rear visibility is also decent thanks to fairly sizable rear windows and headrests that aren't obstructive. A rear view camera is standard. Quality. The Corolla lacks in quality feel especially when compared to Honda, Mazda and Subaru. Hard plastic abounds in most areas, which unfortunately cheapens an otherwise attractive interior design. The seats, infotainment, climate controls and steering wheel look of quality. Everything else does not. Utility. Compact sedans aren't sought after for their outstanding utility, but some do a better job of maximizing the space they have. The Corolla isn't one of those cars. While we like the wide trunk opening and split and folding seats, the level change from the trunk kept us from loading some longer items. Small item storage. Storage options for small items is average. There's a small tray ahead of the shifter and a relatively small dual-level armrest bin. The door pockets will hold a standard water bottle, but not much else. The glove box is an average size, and there's no flight-down storage for sunglasses. Cargo space. The Corolla's trunk has a fairly wide opening and a broad floor ahead of the rear wheel wells but, at 13 cubic feet of volume, space is on the lower side of average. The rear seats are split 6,040 and they fold, but there is a pretty significant two-level step up from the trunk floor. Child safety seat accommodation. Two pairs of latch anchors are tucked away somewhat deep into the rear seat cushions, which doesn't make for easy access. But the upper tethers are located under flip covers and are easier to access. The Corolla's generous rear legroom is advantageous when it comes to rear-facing seats. Technology. The Corolla is just average across the board when it comes to technology. The driver aids don't quite function to the standard of other competitors such as Honda and Subaru, and Toyota's smartphone integration, through its own proprietary app, is a poor substitute for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Audio and Navigation The audio system is fine, but sound quality begins to get a little fuzzy when you crank up the volume. Navigation comes courtesy of your smartphone after downloading Toyota's Intune app. The screen resolution is sharp, but the glassy piano black surfaces surrounding it are a magnet for fingerprints. Smartphone integration. There's a USB connector, and Bluetooth pairs quickly and works well. Toyota provides smartphone integration through its own app called Intune, which isn't nearly as robust as Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Driver aids. Lane departure lane keeping assist doesn't operate below 32 miles per hour, though it does a decent job when it's operational. The adaptive cruise control had some trouble maintaining uphill speed and, like Mazda's system, won't bring the car to a stop. Bummer. But this stuff is standard. That's rare. Voice control. The voice controls respond well to commands, 
though if they don't there is an option to train the system to recognize your voice. Functions are limited to audio and phone calls unless you use Toyota's Intune app. Siri Voice will work with a paired iPhone if you hold the button longer. Mm -hmm.